the UN being tried in the world court for complicity in the CIA's Cold War and post-9-11 crimes. Best case. It would be wrong to think of the role of the UN during the Cold War between the USA and then Soviet USSR of Russia as that of referee between these global superpowers. The UN Security Council is comprised of the Allied nations following World War II. But the Allies' first act as the UN was to create the Nation of Israel by supervising a European and American invasion and military occupation, Ashkenazi land grab, of the holy lands around Jerusalem from the native largely Bedouin Palestinian Arabic Semitic inhabitants. The goal was to make a place for the Jews. Since that time, the only role of the UN was as a superpower to juxtapose and dissipate all organized opposition against Israel within the Muslim world, the so-called green voting bloc of the General Assembly of the UN. The Muslim world has itself been split into two, and their civil war between Shia and Sunni compressed and heightened by the UN Security Council isolating these nations from foreign relief aid. Gaza, for example, was sent a flotilla of humanitarian supplies via the Mediterranean seaports of Egypt. The IDF stormed this flotilla of boats by night with helicopters and destroyed it. This act, one among thousands, was never reported as a crime to the UN's world court. However, as I have said elsewhere, if the world court were independent of the UN, they would try the heads of the UN's own Security Council's member nations. If this act were to ever occur, it would usher in a new era of enlightenment and libertarianism, or literal liberty-messaged liberalism. We could easily deflect Apophis and evolve ourselves into a state of conscious super-awareness, even finally achieving contact with other sentient ESP using EBEs. As I have written elsewhere, there are basically two dimensions that supersede our own which are crossing over one another now. In the future of the worse world line, the IMF assumes sovereign control above the UN. In the better future, the UN's Security Council could be dissolved. It all depends on whether the U.S. federal level government or the privately owned Central Bank of the USA, the Federal Reserve, triumphs in the end. Global Emperor Ron Paul There is another possible outcome, even if the USA federal government ousts their control of U.S. popular public opinion from the Federal Reserve Central Bank. And that is if Ron Paul is appointed Secretary General of the UN. I don't have any personal opinions about this option at this time. In my opinion, it would be a coin toss as to whether he was able to implement a gold coin currency, either local to the USA as US President, or globally as UN Secretary General. Ultimately, it comes down to the question of which is more important to Ron Paul personally, as a libertarian and as the champion of liberty. Would it be better to have a sound global economy based on gold coin currency, or would it be better to attrition out global government? As Secretary General of the UN, Ron Paul could do both, but as President of the USA, he could accomplish both on that nation's local level, and thus allow it to lead by example anyway. So it would be better in the short term for Ron Paul to be US President than in the long term it would be if he were UN Secretary General. With Ron Paul as US President, he can work to dissipate the effect of the UN and to dissolve its relevancy on the global stage of geopolitical theater. This would prove more effective than dissolving the post and the legislature of the UN as Secretary General. But the effect it would accomplish would be nearly the same. It may appear to some that it would be more expedient to place Ron Paul in charge of the existing New World Order than it is to allow him to accomplish its abolition from outside of its inner circles. 
In all likelihood, it would not be, and whether the coin of chance lands on heads or tails, it's still a coin. The real issue of breaking the Federal Reserve Bank, abolishing central banks in general, and scaling back the practice of savings banks to become investment banks by making loans, let alone charging interest. The real issue should be implementing a gold coin currency and returning the people of this planet away from interference in their personal lives by the USA's federal government. If the liberty message is followed through onto its ultimate extension, it means a world where the laws of society are no longer necessary to enforce with a standing class of armed citizens, police and military, because all of us would be allowed to carry a gun. It would be a society where everyone owned, but no one ever needed to use, a gun. There would be no laws to enforce besides those of commerce against racketeering, forming corporations, or as they were originally called, confidence artists colluding in a conspiracy, against counterfeiting, creation of fiat credit to loan, against price fixing, charging interest on loans, and against taxation, collecting debts using violence. This can be achieved with or without Ron Paul personally, but it cannot be achieved without breaking the current new world order of elder rich elites who shape and design policy via the independent actions of the CIA, whose black budget is funded by the independent from oversight Federal Reserve. Right now, Ron Paul is simply the only public figure with the balls to stand up against the New World Order.